Hey, what's up guys? Nunu here. I made this poll on my YouTube asking you which scene breakdown would you like to see. And the most voted was this one. So in today's video, I'll show you everything related to this scene. The materials, the lighting, how I made some render effects and a couple of tricks. So without further ado, let's get started. So let's start here by showing you where I downloaded this scene. So I didn't create this scene from scratch. I downloaded it from Evermotion. So Evermotion has a lot of scenes that you can download already done. This one is from Arch Exteriors, the volume 33. And it's this one here. So you can see. You can purchase these scenes uh, all together in a bundle or individually. So this one, mine is this one. So if you want to download the same, you can do it here. It comes with the uh, FBX, 3ds Max and all, all the textures. And so now that I, I open my scene here in uh, 3ds Max and you see that it has all the buildings, it has a road. I already did some uh, cleanup here because I wanted to use some elements from Lumion, like the, the vegetation assets, for example. So I did a quick cleanup here and uh, it has all the textures as you can see already applied to it. So one fast way that you can do this instead of uh, importing directly into, into Lumion and then applying each material one by one, uh, I use the Lime Exporter because Lime Exporter, you can let me show you here, with this tool, it will export into FBX file with all the textures already applied to it. So you can just go to limeexporter.com and uh, you can try it for one day. They have one day free trial, but it's quite cheap. It's just about 20 euros per year. So to get, uh, to get a subscription for this. Here, as you can see, it's really easy. You just uh, select the scene or you can even group into several files because it does have a limitation of 800 megabytes per scene. So what you could do if that happens is that you can group, for example, let's say that I select these three elements and then I'll go here, see group, and I can give it a group name. In this case, I'm just going to give it 01. Okay. And so I can select now this object here. This is one group. I can select the remaining ones. Let's say this one and this one. Let's call it uh, group two. Of course, there's more, but just for example, you can now go here to export options and you will see that it says export single, but instead of single, let's say export files by groups. So it will export all the groups that you define. It will export it as one FBX file, okay? With all the textures applied. And after this, you just click here, the whole scene or your selected object, if you want to just the selected object, but in this case, we select whole scene and we give it a name, press okay. And then it will automatically start making the conversion. And then you can download the files into your computer. And after I done that, I imported the file into Lumion. In this case, I'm using here Lumion 11. It was the version that I used for this project. And let's start with the materials. As you can see, all of these materials already has these decals, all of these decals, they are embedded in the texture. In Lumion 11, we didn't have the decals. So all of these textures, if I click here, as you can see here on the bottom, uh, they, they do have all of these uh, imperfections, all of these decals already embedded into the texture itself. And how can you do this? And, and so to quickly explain what is this uh, unwrap, let me just open here. I have here a cube. I can do a more detailed tutorial if you like me to. Just let me know in the comments if you like a more detailed tutorial of this unwrapping and what it is. But just quickly to explain you how what it is, I have here the cube and then I go here to unwrap tools and you see that I just did here a project and uh, each face, if I select, see, it's now indiv individually here projected. And so I can take this to Photoshop, for example, and paint this face, let's say red, this one blue, this one I can paint green. And so this way I could in Photoshop, instead of painting several different colors, I could put on the on the bottom here on this area, some grunge details here, some exposed brick, you know, all of these things. It was exactly how they did it in this Evermotion scene. And that's why it is, it is a little bit more realistic the materials because it has more detail into it. So going back here, that's why if you want to apply simply a, a texture with a, a plaster texture right here, it will not be as realistic as this one because this one has already a lot of different elements here, right? So, and this the same for the bottom one here, it has this exposed brick. 
here you can see a lot of uh, on the on the bottom usually on the bottom it's where most of the dirt accumulates so it's uh, important to add all of these elements right so you can see that all the buildings have a lot of these grunge elements a lot of this dirt of course you can do this now with the uh, lumion 12 you can do it with, with decals but uh, sometimes maybe it's faster for you to do it directly into photoshop but again let me know in the comments if you'd like me to explain a little bit better this unwrap. Another part of the material was this road. It had a, a different material, but I selected one from uh, Lumion Library, and it's this one, the Evermotion Cobblestone 003. And I figured it would it would fit well this this scene, this type of uh, stones, and it had the displacement already, so it's quite nice this material, as you can see. Okay. And actually, I'm going to move the sun so we can have a little bit more light here. Okay. Yeah, so you can see how this material is. It's quite nice. Then this scene had other elements here that I removed and I added my own elements, like the, if I go here to objects, you can see that I added uh, from Lumion Library itself, I added a couple of boxes here, some other boxes here, some trash, you know, some painting here on the side, bicycle, and uh, of course with this bicycle, if I select it, you can set which color uh, you want, so you can set a different color that would match better your scene, so mine, I just left it like this. I want to remind you that you shouldn't put anything completely white, okay, because it will just uh, overexpose everything, there's nothing completely white or completely black like this. If I made it completely black, you'll not see any details, so it's better to just leave it like a dark gray and a light gray for white, dark gray for black. Then in some of these uh, elements, when you click it, you can see that I just adjusted the um, gloss and the reflectivity values. And in some of the materials, I did add the um, here. You see, I added the, the normal map as well. In this case, I just adjusted a little bit the gloss and the reflectivity. I added the glass from uh, Lumion to these uh, stars. Okay. And I always adjusted a little bit more the reflect reflectivity of the glass. Okay. And for the interior, there are probably some materials that uh, were not set up, like this one, for example, uh, because I figured that it's something that you are just like, from here, you don't see it so much, and since it's even with a, with a window, so it will not be so visible. So I set up some of the elements, others I left it uh, as it was, because I figured it to be fine as it was. And this, for example, I added the emissive here to, the, to this, so I go here to show more, I added the emissive material, okay, and we'll go soon to the, to the lights. Now I'm just showing you the materials. For example, these lights, I set up a warm color and then I go to emissive and increase the emissive value. Okay, so if I decrease and I increase, you can see the difference. So, and it did exactly the same for these lights right here. And by the way, another thing is that sometimes, especially when you create this normal map, uh, you have to pay attention if the normal map is flipped or not. And if it's not, if it's flipped, it means that it has the wrong light information. So for example, if I had here one light, let me just add here this light. Okay. So in this case, you can already see just a, an example that the normal map is flipped. Why? Because we have the mortar here it's coming out when it should be inside. So if I click here, okay, now you see that the brick, it's coming out and the mortar, it's inside. So this is the correct way. When people ask me, how can they tell? This is the best thing you can do. You can just put a light on the material like this, close to the material and see how the light reacts. And so we can see that now we have the shadows from the light here on the bottom. So everything is reacting correctly. So I'm going to actually save the changes and remove this light here okay so for this scene the materials are basically all the same i just uh, click to set up the material because when the file comes from the 
Lime Exporter with FPX. It, it does come with the textures applied, but you still need to go here, similar to how I showed you this one. Click here and click Standard. And just then you can set up your uh, settings here. For example, if you want this uh, to be less reflective, you can still do it here, okay, and the gloss. So you, you still need to set up the materials or else you'll not be able to add any reflection planes to, this, uh, to these materials. And by the way, before we move on, I would like to invite you to my Lumion Render course. If you want to take your renders to the next level, I'll leave a link in the top right corner and also in the description below this video. Now I'll start showing other elements that I add to the scene to add some more humanization to it. So I added a couple of people. So these people are from the section, if you go here to people and animals, you'll find the people 3D static. And these ones are the highest quality ones. I'm gonna put larger. So they are not uh, animated, so you cannot use this for animations, but uh, they have higher quality than the other ones. So since I was just doing a, a still image, this one was better to use, okay? And so I just add a couple of people here, like uh, they are just walking around, they are just uh, seeing the menus, you know? And one important note is that if you notice, I always try to not show the faces because it's usually what gives away immediately that it's uh, uh, 3D, it's 3D people and not real. If you're going to use them, try to use them all the time in these type of positions when they are not facing directly to the camera. And the next thing was the some trees that I added here. So you can see that I had a, a one tree, one big tree here that was kind of like working as a vine coming this way, but it is a tree <laughs> and it is inside the, the building, but it doesn't matter because it's something that uh, from far away you don't notice. So you just see this part. And so sometimes you need to create things like this. It's uh, of course, it, in real life, this wouldn't happen, right? But uh, the end result, it's what matters. And the end result looks way better with this here. And I also had here a couple of other elements like trees. I added some of these uh, widths, okay? I scattered them throughout the scene, a lot of them, especially in between the rocks, okay? It's usually where they grow. So I added a couple of them and intersections between the, the road and the building. Usually you find some of them as well. So I added a couple of, of them there, as you can see. And I added another tree here, okay? So this tree will be just visible, the, the branches, okay? And that's it for the vegetation elements. And the next, what I did for this scene was the lights. Well, actually, before going to lights, let's go to objects. So these objects, I already showed you this one here, but also I added here a couple of curtains, okay? So to make some variation, and uh, I'll show you a little trick that I did here in a second, which is with the lights. So I have here, let me just select the lights, okay? I have here a couple of lights and these ones, it feels like the, the window is lit, right? Because I have two area lights here, as you can see, facing the window, okay? And these two area lights, you just add them with the, the fall off really high and very low brightness. And in the end, when you are looking from the, the street, it looks like there is a light inside. So you don't actually need to, to go here and add a couple of lights inside, you know, all of this. You just need to create one area light here next to the, to the curtains. And that's it, it will create this effect. So one nice trick for you. <laughs> next about the lights, for example, here, I added one light inside, but facing the exterior so it's facing this way so if i press f8 to show the shadows so you can see that the light is creating some shadows and also some highlights here so from the interior that is lit we also have here a couple of uh, spots for these uh, these lamps here and here did the same thing so basically i added here on the top some spots just to create some uh, some shadows you can see here, create these shadows. And then I added a big spotlight. So it's this one, lamp 24. So we can have, you see, 
this uh, effect as well. The same shadows coming from the star. And lastly, I'm just going to make this darker so we can see better. Since my sun is setting on this area, I added as well one uh, last light here. So with this color, okay, it's, uh, it's white, the color. And uh, with the brightness about here, as you can see, and it's pointing this way just to create some extra highlights on this tree here. So if I, let's say that I remove the brightness here, so I kind of lose all of these highlights. So if I put it back, so you can see that it gives me some of the highlights on the building, some highlights on, on the trees, which make it look quite nice. So again, sometimes you need to do some tricks with, with the lighting. You cannot just simply trust that Lumion will do everything for you with, uh, with the effects and all the lighting. So you also need to create these little tricks with the light to, to make your scene look better. So, and that's it. You see that this is a very simple scene. So we don't have many elements here going around. I don't have any roofs here on the top. I don't need them, apparently. <laughs> and uh, now I'll show you the effects. So now here inside photo mode, I'm going to show you what I did here. So let me just disable this handheld camera so we can see better. And uh, I added this precipitation effect because it does look good when you add this uh, precipitation phase, you see, with this wet floor like it just rained. Uh, it creates some of the reflection from the building and uh, on evening scenes it looks uh, particularly nice because it has all of these reflections from the lights as well. So it does make the scene look a little bit better. And uh, by the way, you can see now here on the on the render mode, you the, the effect that this light has, you see, this little highlight. So it's not a super bright light, but just enough to give a little bit of separation here on these elements. So it's not completely dark, all of this area. So you can see clearly the type of vegetation here. So I used real skies and for this one I use a sunset and uh, it's this one, okay, sunset six. For the settings I didn't change much, as you can see, just uh, made the, the brightness of the sky. So because if you change the brightness here on this first slider, it will be the brightness for the, the, the skylight on the, on, the, on the scene itself. But this one, the second one, it's just for the sky. So if you increase or decrease, it will just affect the sky, as you can see here. So just affects the sky itself. So I'm gonna leave it like this. Then we have here lens flare. I like to use the lens flare so you can have this uh, bloom effect here a little bit. And uh, not only that, sometimes I like to have this um, anamorphic tricks. You know, when you have this, uh, uh, horizontal blue lines, you can set them here. So you can see here, if I increase, so I'm going to increase this all the way to the maximum. And if I reduce this, so you see these little lines here, of course now this is exaggerated, but uh, sometimes it's nice to have this if it's a creative decision. Okay. Next we have color correction. So here I just made the scene a little bit warmer, so 0.1. I left the tint at 0, the brightness I decreased, I think it was at 0.5, I decreased to 0.4, and the contrast 0.7, so I also increased here the limit low a little bit, and this will make the shadows a little bit darker. Next the reflection. Before checking the reflection, there is one important thing about the reflection that you should know. And do you see this preview? If it's like this normal quality, it will be all the time displaying the, 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 if you set here high quality, the high quality reflections. And it will make your scene, as you can see, it's already lagging a little bit to make your scene, the performance of your scene slower. And you don't want that, right? Because you want the highest quality reflections in the final render. It doesn't matter so much here in the, in the photo mode. So you can just set this to none, okay? And now it's much, much, much faster, as you can see. And this I just set up a couple of reflection planes, especially to the to the windows and uh, to the facade, to the, to the ground. So just a couple of them. Uh, speaking of reflection, don't forget to go to 
the utilities and always add the reflection control okay this way it, it will be easier for you to set up the materials because it will show accurately the reflections and it will help as well with the reflections of uh, round objects like uh, this bicycle for example all of this so going back here now for the shadow uh, this coloring I, just to create a little bit of tint of blue tint and uh, brightness uh, left it about here the interior exterior I left it at zero but if you want to 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 have your interiors brighter you can set up this all the way to the maximum okay uh, then omni shadow about zero one and uh, that's it just leave normal and have the soft shadows and fine detail shadows because if you don't leave this and go to ultra sharp for example uh, the shadows will be way sharp and they don't look so realistic so it's always better to leave these two options on and normal here on the shadow type then skylight here i wanted the most possible amount of sky so i, I left it at two so all the way up and i left this at 09 because i still want to have some blue tint from the sky in my shadows so i left it here if i look back all the way you will see that my shadows are way too blue if i leave it at zero i don't have any blue from the sky so i figured that 09 was a good uh, balance and for the final render i leave, leave this at ultra but if you are just testing you can leave this at normal okay because it will make your render times uh, much faster then hyperlight so this hyperlight it's uh, basically uh, how many light bounces you want on your scene and uh, i left it at 25 in this case and enable in preview means that uh, if i click here on the scene to make a preview it will not have the hyperlight effect if i leave this on now it will make the preview with the hyperlight effect then i added a little bit of fog so here it will be to your taste how much fog you want on your scene this uh, print post poster in answer it's important because usually if you render a 4K or 8K in the lights, especially where you have lights, Lumion can render some uh, horizontal lines like this and uh, it doesn't look good. So if you add this print poster uh, effect, it will uh, remove all of those lines. So in 4K and 8K, always add this effect. And then I also add a little bit of bloom. So it will, can you see in the sky, basically in the sky area, it will create this overexposed effect. So I like this because it makes it look uh, more realistic because cameras, real real cameras usually cannot handle so well uh, what they are exposing. If they are exposing to the ground, they will be exposing to the ground. If they are to the sky, it will be to the sky. It will not expose quite well the two, two, two areas, okay? And that's it. Then I just rendered. And then we have the handheld camera, which is basically to take a vertical uh, render and here on the angle, I put it to 90 degrees. Okay. It was here, I just rotated 90 degrees. You could have as well the two point perspective, as you can see here, but sometimes the two point perspective, it's way harder to have with a handheld camera. So that's why in this case, I prefer to leave it off. You can always do the, hand up, the two point perspective in Photoshop anyway, if you want to. So you always have that option. And after this, I just took the image, I rendered the image and took it to Photoshop to add some color correction. I can show you here what I did. So here in Photoshop, we have first the main render, right? Let me just zoom in a little bit. And we have a color balance. So in this color balance, I just wanted to have a little bit more warm tones. So you can see the difference. Then we have an exposure and this exposure, I just mask out this area, as you can see. Okay. And I just pump up the brightness a little bit on this area. Okay. And here is the reflections I render. I just made it to screen and about 40% and mask out in, just in some areas that I wanted to pump up the reflections a little bit more. Uh, th this will be the color ID map that I rendered in case I just want to select some areas to fix some areas. Then we have curves. We have color balance again. So one more pass of the color balance. And, uh, but this one actually I left it off because I was testing this one, uh, this which type of uh, scene I was going for. Then we have these levels. So just pump up a little bit levels. 
and this photo filter I added the sepia tone a little bit to the scene okay and then on top of this I went to lens correction effect here lens correction and uh, I added here a little bit of distortion you can add more or less as you can see so I added just a little bit of the distortion because usually lens do have this distortion and so I'm all the time trying to replicate what real lens have so it will make the render look more realistic and let me just show you actually on the first one how would you do the two-point perspective so the vertical lens straight here in Photoshop you can go to filter and then camera or filter okay and here on the bottom you have geometry and you'll see this uh, first one okay you see that automatically applied perspective corrections so this one you can see before and after okay you see you lose some of the image because it has to to straighten up this image it will crop some some areas but it does make the image look better so this is an option that you can always do in uh, later in Photoshop as you can see so if I press OK okay now you can see so before for example and after so it's really up to you if you want to have this uh, last step so I hope you like this video don't forget to give it a like and let me know in the comments below if you like me to make more scene breakdowns like this one and I'll see you in the next one